For our demonstration about the choke plate setting, I'm using a German Solex 30 picked one carburetor, and this is the VW 1051, which came on all 1967 Volkswagens from Germany straight to the United States. First, let's look at the parts that are relevant to the choke plate setting. We have the idle cam, the choke plate lever, the accelerator lever, and the accelerator return spring. For our purposes, I'm going to disable the, the spring by removing it so it doesn't get in the way. Now we're going to look at the passenger, what would be the passenger side or the generator side. First, we notice that there, here is the uh, he, choke heater element with the choke heater element retaining ring and the three screws. Let's look into the throat of the carburetor so that we can see the choke plate. We can actuate the choke plate by pulling on the choke plate lever over here or by moving, rotating the uh, choke heater element counterclockwise or clockwise. What we want to do is set the choke plate so that it's getting a fuel-air mixture that will combust properly in the combustion chamber. If we have the choke plate set too widely open, then what happens is there's going to be too much air and the carburetor doesn't start properly. If we close it tightly, there's plenty of gas, but no air now, and so we're going to choke the carburetor. So if we run it lean, we're not going to start properly. If we run it closed and rich, it's not going to start it properly. I like to set the choke plate about a quarter to three-eighths inches from the throat edge of the carburetor. We're looking at this point right here. Once I get it set, I'm going to hold this and then tighten the three screws, but we're not through yet. So if I if I turn the choke heater element counterclockwise, it closes. If I turn it clockwise, it opens it. Now we have a little thing here casting on the uh, outer edge of the carburetor casting. David Brown calls these pips. There's three of them there. One's taller and two are shorter. As well, we have a little groove here on the choke heater itself. We uh, talked about this, and really in the Volkswagen literature, David says there's no mention of this as to if it's useful in the setting or not. One would think that the, the groove might align with one of the pips. But in fact, these were mass-produced and after 50-something years, maybe they don't adjust like they should. But I'm going to set the choke plate a quarter to three-eighths of an inch open, meaning that the groove is going to land right there between the tall one and the short one on the bottom. That's where I like to have it set. And see when I flip the, the choke lever, choke plate lever, it returns to the same opening setting. Now let's reattach the spring. Come on spring, cooperate. When we've driven the car and the engine is hot, what happens is the choke heater element has released the tension on the choke plate the idle cam has gone to its lowest point and the pin on the accelerator lever is holding it open. So when we park the car at night, this is the position that the choke plate is going to be left in. Now when you get out in the morning, you're going to start your car, you're going to go to the Volkswagen show or go down to see the mechanic. You're going to get in, put the key in the ignition, do nothing yet, depress the accelerator lever, uh, pedal one time, and when you do, that's what happens. Choke plate returns to its cold setting. Now you're ready to go. You can turn the key to start position and start your car. As the engine heats, the choke heater element is also going to heat inside. And the spring, bimetal spring, is going to release the tension on the choke plate 
so that it's going to open like that as we're going down the road. Now we have a proper fuel air mixture. We have proper air, proper get fuel to uh, combust in the chamber. Thank you for watching this little video.